For years, I would patiently await the arrival of the weekly email from FamilySearch about the new digital collections that had been added to the historical records collection portion of the website. It was always a thrill to see what was new each week, but then I made a discovery. You see, the historical records collection does not include all of the digital records that FamilySearch has. And Family Search has been digitizing their microfilm collection for the last several years, but not all of these make it to the historical records collection. So where are those records hiding? Well, they're in the Family Search catalog. The catalog includes entries for every holding, both those that are offline and those that are digitized and available online. So I want to quickly show you the difference between the historical record collection and the catalog so you can really see what you might be missing out on if you're only using the, historic, the historical record collection. Then I'll take you inside the catalog and show you how to identify what's immediately accessible online, what's available online with restrictions, and what's available offline. So let's jump in here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is sign in. And if you do not have a sign in, you can create a free account. So first we're going to take a look at the, uh, rec the historical records collection. And to get to that, you go to the search menu and you choose records. And here you can type in a name, a place, things like that, and search for any of the collections that happen to be indexed. So the historical records collection actually contains indexes that do not have images, uh, digital images with indexes, and digital index, excuse me, digital images that are not indexed. And I'll show you what, how to determine that in just a moment. Um, but you can also do it by location. If you click on the United States, you can choose a state and kind of hone in on different things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go into Browse All Published Collections. So this is the entire historical record collections. And there are almost 3,000 collections available. So the first thing you'll notice is there are some collections that don't have anything to the left of them and then these two different camera icons. So first, this particular collection has uh, no icon and that simply means that it is only an index. So there are no images attached to these particular entries that are in this index. Now these two camera icons are very different. This first one is indicating that there is uh, some index records. You can see there's 31,582 here. And uh, this particular collection, although indexed here, uh, the images are somewhere else. And in this case, they happen to be on fold three. Now, in most cases, depending on the collection, you will need to have a fold three subscription to access those records, um, although there are some free collections. So it will depend on the record set. Now, this collection has this camera icon, and that means that these records are uh, digitized and available here on Family Search. So then there are other collections, if we scroll down here, we've got a camera icon telling us that th this is indeed indexed, or excuse me, uh, imaged or digitized here on Family Search. Um, but you'll notice that this says browse images. That's because this is an unindexed collection, but you can browse the images manually, just like you would if you were using microfilm. So that's kind of the the overview of the historical records collection. Now, I want to show you very quickly that if I type in Illinois and filter over here and I pull up everything that they have for Illinois and I scroll down and I'm like, OK, you know, this is all general state, state, state. And then we get into Chicago, we get into Cook County, DeKalb County. Kane County. Okay, so I see that they have an, uh, an index 
for newspaper obituaries. So if I were only looking at the historical records collection, I would think to myself, wow, they really don't have anything for King County. And that's kind of a bummer because I do a ton of research in King County. So I would think that this family search site is not of any help to me. But this really isn't the case. Because remember I said, not everything makes it here. And I would, I would actually venture to guess or even say that the majority of what is digitized is not in this historical records collection. So let me show you really quickly how I know this, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna go to the catalog. And I'm gonna open it in a new tab so we can flip back to that historical records uh, in a moment. So in the family search catalog, I want to search by place, which is already defaulted to, and I want to search for Kane County, Illinois. So I'm going to do that. And look at everything that's here. There is a ton of stuff for Kane County. Uh, directories, history, land and property, maps, probate records, vital records. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff here. So why wasn't I seeing anything over there? Well, you might be thinking, well, because it's not digitized. But let me quickly show you that is not the case. So I'm going to look at vital records. And I'm going to look at these birth records from 1877 and 1900. And if you scroll down and you look at all the films that you would normally have come here and grabbed the film number and then gone to the family history library and pulled the film and taken it to a microfilm reader and sat down and gone through all of the images on the film. But you'll notice over here we have this camera icon. And what does this tell us? Well, if you hover over it, it says browse the images online. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's say I'm looking for a birth on um, May 3rd, uh, 1894. So I'm going to come to this particular uh, collection, which is June 1893 to June 1894. So I'm going to click on the camera icon, and voila, I have 1,600 images. Now, to get started, you can just double-click on the first one, and you can use the, the plus and the minus to blow it up or uh, make it smaller. If you have a scrolling mouse, a scroll wheel mouse, you can use your scrolling wheel to do to do the enlargements. Um, you can use these arrows to move forward through the records. And real quick, in case you're not aware of this, I just want to point out that we were looking for a, a May 3rd birth and uh, in 1894. And we know this film starts with eight, June 1893, which we can see right here. And it, it went through June of 1894. So I am actually going to type in 1500 to get me towards the end of what would be the film because these are th these were previously filmed and I can see that I am at May 31st so I am going to try again I usually do like 50 50 record increments and I'm in May 13th so I'm getting closer so let's try 1400 oh, and there we go so May 3rd now I, I can go back and make sure that this is the first one which it isn't until I find, you know, what I'm looking for. So I just wanted to point that out in case you weren't uh, aware of being able to jump through. Uh, it's better than hand cranking through um, 1,600 images, right? <laughs> just type in a number and jump, right? Beautiful. So I'm going to go back to the catalog um, real quick and show you... Um, some other things. So I want to look at Chicago records and just know that a lot of these are at the county level but Chicago did keep records uh, independently for quite for a little while so these are uh, a little separate. So I'm going to scroll down here and we're going to look at these vital records and I'll choose these birth certificates and I want to point out two things. One, it says an index for Illinois Cook County birth certificates is available online, click here. So I'm gonna right click on this, open in a new tab for you and see, okay, cool. 
Illinois Cook County birth certificates 1871 to 1949. Now, that was in the catalog, that link to this particular index. And where is this index? Well, this is part of the historical records collection. So I'm going to flip back here and I'm going to show you it is this collection. right here. Illinois Cook County birth certificates 1871 and 1949. Remember, I'll show you. See, 1871 and 1949. So it's here, yes, but I can still go through the catalog. This is the catalog entry here, and it will tell me that there's an index, and it will take me directly to it. So I I don't even really refer to the historical record collection uh, section of the website anymore because everything that I need, everything that's there, I can find in the catalog and more I can find in the catalog. <laughs> As we saw earlier with the Kane County example, there were all those records and, and most of those records actually are digitized and available on uh, through the catalog and you notice that there was only one collection and it was simply an index for newspaper obituaries. So anyways, back to this Chicago uh, birth certificates. So cool, there's an index. That's very helpful because when you come down here, you're like, oh, wow, I need the certificate number because they're broken down by year and certificate numbers. So that index will be helpful to uh, allow you to get the year and the certificate number to help you find the actual record. But you'll notice we have a camera icon, but we also have this silly little key above it. And this means, as I hover over it, it says, this film is viewable with additional restrictions. So if I click on this, it's gonna look like it's gonna give it to me and then it doesn't. <laughs> so it's telling me that I need to be at a Family History Center or a Family Search Affiliate Library or the Family History Library in Salt Lake City itself to access these records, which is a bummer, but they are quickly available if you are able to uh, find a family history center or an affiliate library near you. So I'm gonna go back to this record and you'll notice they're all like that. Most of these Chicago and Cook County records that are digitized will all fall into this kind of category. And just know that if one record set is available, um, freely available. It doesn't mean that all of them for a particular town or a particular county are. I've seen mixes of stuff in certain locations where a good portion of them are completely available through the catalog fr from home at two o'clock in the morning in your PJs, and there are others that are not in the same locale. So it's it's dependent upon a variety of things, uh, particularly dealing with the contracts between the Family History Library and the uh, custodian of the records. So uh, real quick, I just want to bring to your attention, we're going to do another um, search here. I just want to show you this. So I'm going to do a search for Oakland County, Michigan. And I'm going to go to these taxation records and this record of inheritance tax collection. So there's no index, you know, it's not pointing me to an index or anything. And if you come down here, you'll get this icon, which means that the item is available at the Family History Center. And by this, they mean the Family History Library. That's the location of it and um, it is only available on microfilm. So in the instances where you have um, the availability through only microfilm or digitized, but with those restrictions of having to be at a family history center or the um, a, an affiliate library, um, don't, don't disregard these as, as part of your planning for, for records because just because you can't access them right now at this moment doesn't mean that you should neglect them. You just need to find a way to access them. And in this case, you know, we are, as I'm recording this, we are in the middle of a pandemic. We're almost a year in at this point. And the Family History Library is uh, not open and I, I'm not sure when they will reopen. And so 
it's a little hard for me to get this record that I might need because it's on film there. Um, and I, and to my knowledge, they don't fulfill orders. I know they used to a long time ago and I've taken advantage of that, but as far as I know, they do not do this anymore. They may have reenacted it for the simple fact that there are probably some people who are, uh, working to maintain the library. Um, and they may be doing something along those lines during this pandemic, whether they are or not, I can't say for sure, but, uh, it's possible that uh, I could hire a researcher when the Family History Library reopens, whenever that might be, and that might cost me a little bit of money to, for somebody's time, which is fine. But you'll notice here under the notes, it tells me that the microfilm of the original records is at the State Archives of Michigan in Lansing. So. I could always contact the state archives if they happen to be open or at least have a few staff in there that are handling various things and perhaps they are able to pull the record and maybe send me a digital copy or send me a physical copy in the mail, whatever their policies are. I do not know. I, I've never looked into these particular records, but um, just know that you, you might have other options. Uh, you could even, if you find that there's a land records um, available, uh, you you know that the county is probably the likely place to have them and it will probably tell you here in the notes section of the catalog entry and you can very well um, perhaps contact the county and uh, ask them if they are able to maybe do a, an index lookup uh, for a particular person in a, a short period of time. They're not going to do it for the entire, like, you know, three, you know, like for three decades, they're probably not going to do it, but maybe for a small range, they might, it depends on their policies. So I just wanted to mention that, you know, don't, don't neglect these, uh, just because they can't be accessed right here, right now. So, um, real quick, I just want to come back to the, uh, search results and I just want to remind you that you know look at all of this stuff for oakland county michigan oh, just oakland county alone right there's all of these things and you'll notice that we've got land oops missed <laughs> land and property we've got deeds for a century and they are all digitized and available beautiful but if I come back to the historical records collection and I start to type in Michigan, if I can spell, and you'll notice that um, there's no general Michigan deeds, Michigan land records, so there's nothing general. And then if you start to go get down into like the counties, you've got Detroit, Eastern District, Eastern and Western District for naturalization records, Grand Army of the Republic, and and the only county here is Saginaw. And we just saw how many reels of uh, film that's been digitized. Oops, wrong window. For these, uh, for Oakland County alone, that's a lot. So look at all the things that you could be missing if you're not using the catalog. I, I personally, you know, this this was my bookmark. I, I wouldn't even go to the home page because I would just come directly to this many years ago. And then when I discovered that not everything was being put, I mean, yes, there's how many, well, almost 3,000 collections, and there are a ton of records behind that. But this is not everything. As you just saw, the, just the examples of Kane County, Illinois, and Oakland County, Michigan alone should be enough to convince you that although this is a nice little section of the, the website, it is a little um, misleading in that this is not everything that's digitized. And even if you wanted to come straight, a, a lot of times I do still come here and just hit the, um, the index for the for these Cook County uh, births, deaths, and marriages, just because it's easier for me to type in that filter, come here and do that, than it is for me to go through the catalog. So I still do come here for certain things, but for the most part, 
I avoid it because it is unfortunately not representative of everything that they have. And as you saw, you could be in that catalog entry and it will tell you these records are online or these records have an index. So really the catalog is like your best friend. This is the place where you need to go. This should be your entry point. I should be on that screen of the catalog and not the historical records when I'm saying that. This is your this is your home. This is where you need to come. Um, and anytime you want to figure out what's available for a particular place, you just start typing in, you know, like we did King County, and I'm going to choose Illinois. There's a King County apparently in Utah and Pennsylvania, a Kane in, uh, city or town in Pennsylvania and Wyoming. Good to know. And, and also in... Uh, Ireland. So I want to choose that one and I hit search and boom, I get all of these wonderful collections. So I just wanted you to be aware that while this is nice, the catalog is your best friend. This is where you need to start if you want to have um, a wonderful chance of finding records for the location in which you are trying to uh, work in. Um, it's going to give you so much more and you'll be able to tell whether or not they're available immediately, whether or not you have to be at a family history center um, or an affiliate library, or if you uh, have to access them on microfilm at the family history library in Salt Lake City. But I just want you to be aware of that because if you're not coming to the catalog, you're missing out on a ton of of digitized records and the records that may not be accessible immediately but you should be aware of um, as you're conducting your research. Thanks for watching.